Wait, wait, leave it. <laughs> Harmless. Come here. Oh boy. Hey you going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today I have to make a new tool for the workshop. I have a job I need to get done. None of my boring bars are big enough to reach down inside this component and do what I need to do in there. So I'm gonna manufacture a new one. A few of the boring bars we've got here, we've got our WMG boring bars, TCMT, TPMRs. We've got a couple of anti-vibe bars. Two of these have been shot made, so the large 80 mil one and then the 40 mil one here. The 40 mil bar has got a square hole broached into one end of it to take square 12 mil tools. The other one has got a slot milled in the end of it to take 16 mil tools. Well, this bar is gonna take 25 mil tools, so we can run all of our big turning tools within the boring bar. There is quite a lot of variety here. There's not much you can't do with the bars we have here now, but I cannot do this job. None of these are big enough. The 80 mil bar is 700 mil long, and it's still too small to get down inside this job and do what I need to do. So what we need to do first, we need to go outside and have a look through what we've got laying in the, in the yard that we can make a new boring bar out of. We're gonna be looking for something about 125 million diameter. It's gonna be a pretty big bar. So let's go for a look, see what we can find. This is where we keep all of our large diameter metric rods. There is quite a variety here. We do hang on to a lot of the big metric stuff because it is hard to get and it is very, very handy to have around the workshop. The smaller diameter stuff we generally throw in the bin, it's not worth the effort to strip the chrome of it to use it. Where the big metric stuff off the big excavators, it's a very high grade material. It's actually an O2 tool steel that they use. So it's the perfect sort of material to use to make a boring bar. We don't keep old rod material to resell as a pin or something like that. Everything when it comes to cylinders is brand new because I don't know what's happened to it. If it has been stressed, there could be internal fractures. There could be a whole variety variety of things wrong with the material so that stuff goes in the bin and all this big diameter stuff in this grade of material I will hang on to because it is handy for such jobs like this one 150, 50, 175, 15, too small we found the piece of material we are going to use it is a piece of 150 mil induction hardened chrome bar I'll dig that out get into the workshop cut the section off we need, we'll get in the machine and we'll start to machine it.
Righto guys, so we've got the piece of material set up in the machine now. First thing we're going to have to do is get the induction layer off the bar. There is about 5mm on there to be removed. We will be using a ceramic insert to remove the induction layer. Being that we're using ceramic inserts, they are super brittle. They don't like thermal shock. And if you were to try and take it at a full depth of cut, you would have from the tip to about here, inside the job, if that insert was to burst, you would have seconds to disengage the machine before it crashed the tool into the job. You would then take out the anvil and then take out the tool. It's just not worth risking the tool and the job just to try and take that induction layer in one hit. That's why I take it off one mil per pass. You've got about a mil worth of room between the insert and the anvil of the tool. If the insert bursts, it's not actually gonna collide with the tool. I'm not gonna put a CBN insert to do this because they're far too expensive to risk blowing them out. After we get through the induction layer, we can put some carbide back in and then we can rip the bar down to size. I'm gonna be running coolant. Generally, you wouldn't run coolant with ceramic because of thermal shock, but because I'm running flood coolant on the ceramic and on the job they make the ceramics last a little bit longer being that the length of the job how much material has to come off it and how much the tool is engaged on the job for every pass we will be running coolant for the ceramic and the carbide started playing up where the steady was, there's a bit of oil on it, that could have upset it. Hundred and forty three point six. Thirty-eight point four.
Righto guys, so we've completed 99% of the turning on this job. I will need to face this off at, after I've finished all the milling. I might, I might not, I'm not sure yet. So how I'm gonna hold this into a tool post, I'm not gonna use the standard arrangement of a telescoping block where you can slide the bar in and out to whatever depth you want. I don't like that style, especially on a bar this size. Anything that I've got that's over 50 mil in diameter, I won't do a block style where it clamps and pinches on the bar. For a bar that size, that's a lot of overhang outside the tool post itself. Not a big fan of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mill grooves down either side of the bar so we can sit inside my tool post and I'll use the, the bolts to hold the boring bar in the tool post of the machine. While this is set up in the machine, I'm gonna show you the quick and easy way to mark out the areas you need to mill away in order for this to fit in your tool post on the center line of the machine. So the way I mark them out, I simply just use something straight across the bottom of my tool post. I scribe a line in, and then I do the same on the top drawer of the tool post, I scribe a line in there. So that there suits a 32 mil tool height machine. So that's my three larger lathes. That's a quick, easy, efficient way for something like this. He loves these. Ah. Let me get him. This one? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Good boy. On your bed. Well, I have one. We can have two. Destroy that squeaker. <laughs> Over that distance, it's out by a mill.
Righto guys, so we've done all the turning on the boring bar. I've now got it set up in the milling machine. I need to machine out the areas that I marked. We'll be using a 25 mil indexable end mill. So we'll mill out all the pockets with that. I've then got to put my 90 degree milling head on to cut the slot in the end of it for the tool to sit in. We then got to drill and tap three holes for the grub screws to lock in the tools.
So this is the 90 degree milling head. It's an NT40. These are an absolute awesome bit of kit if you've got them. They're not very common. I haven't seen many around. Do have to be very careful with them though. They don't like going over about a thousand RPM. They will blow apart. Not only can these be used as a 90 degree milling attachment, you can actually put slitting saws and other cutters into this, up onto the dovetails of your machine. So this is what they're really designed for, but my other tools fit in this, so I'm gonna use it for that. So, very good if you've got the use for it.
I'll hop through the drill truck. Okay. Right, guys, right, so we've now completed all the machining on the bar. We've drilled and tapped our holes. We've cut our slots. We've done all the milling down there. I've test fitted the tool in there. The grub screws all fit. Everything's good. I'm going to pull it out of the machine now. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up with a grinder, just deburr all these nasty edges. After we do that, we'll throw it in the lathe and show you what it looks like. Right guys, so we've finished making our boring bar now. We've removed about 60 kilos of material from the original bar. 155 kilos. So we're going to do a bit of a comparison on um, our smallest boring bar we have here in the workshop to our largest. So this is a 12 mil. That's our smallest boring bar we have. This was our biggest shop made boring bar. That's an 80 mil by, I think it's about 600 long. To our 125mm bar, 1100 long with 900mm of reach. 
why did I go 125 mil in diameter? A good rule of thumb I've been working with for many, many years now is if I'm gonna make a shop made boring bar, I'm gonna go five times the diameter of the bar in the working length of it. Seems to be the, the, the best way to get the reach and, the, and still have that, that rigidity in the bar. A bit of a price point on what would it cost to make this sort of bar? It took us about six hours, so it's about half a day's work. I didn't pay for the piece of material. It was an offcut, an old ram ramshaft off a EX1900 excavator. Being that it is O2 steel, it is very, very expensive. To buy the piece of material would have been about $1,400. Um, consumables, maybe $20 if that. All in all, put in a little bit of time, use up some old material we had. We've got ourselves a boring bar now that'll reach up to 900 mil deep. We only needed to go to 600 for the next job, but for half a day's work, we've now got a tool that we can keep here in the workshop. So yeah, job done. Hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job, I need to build our Hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today I have to do a... So today we're gonna to be making a new boring bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> new boring bar. I use the, the bolts on my tool poles. Tool poles. <laughs> this is a Palbert 25 mil. Try insert in, um, fuck me. <laughs> fuck me. I fucked all that up. <laughs> um, where the fuck was I going with that? <laughs> so how... No. Keep going. I've lost it. I'm just going to start again. Okay. Do you want to... What? You're good like that? Pretty comfy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to look at me? Or look down here? Uh, well, I don't know. What are you doing? Right we'll use that to mill out all that material. Hang on. What? You got swarf on your beard. Where? On your neck beard. I can't see it. <laughs> Where? Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. Am I starting again? The piece of material would have been roughly a thousand. Actually, let me find it. Sure. Okay, move again. Get out of the way. <laughs> what the hell? Whoa. It's flying around. Wait, get out. <laughs> Point oh one five of a mil over that distance is fucking insanely good. Okay. <laughs> How heavy is that? Fucking very. Dog. Good one. There's tweezers there. <laughs> By about eight inches. <laughs> nah, plain. It's about three. Angry. <laughs> <laughs> cute one. Hey, cute. So was that was that the biggest one? That was the biggest one. Everyone was amazing how big that was. Yeah, right. Look how big that fucking thing is. <laughs> He's raw and angry. <laughs> fucking deep penetration. Oh my that. god. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Did he kill it already? No. It's fine, dude. Hang on. Ah, ah, ah. Get, 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 get. Hang on. Hey, 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 drop it, drop it. Homeless. <laughs>